Hey kids, guess what? It's so exciting. It's the beginning of module three, but we're not gonna do lesson one today. We're just going to prepare for module three. So um, it's the objective is to make equivalent fractions. We're gonna be working with fractions all throughout this module. Uh, we're gonna work with the number line because we can, you can look at a ruler and recognize that there are fractions all over this ruler every time there's a little tick mark on there that is a fraction of a whole so we'll be talking about that we're going to make an area model so that you can kind of draw your own uh, fractional model and hopefully see like how many shaded parts out of the whole and then we'll be using numbers of course so you need a few supplies just to understand this and typically when I'm teaching and everybody's here we make our own fraction strips but since everybody's at home or possibly still at home uh, I went on the internet and I said I need fraction strips did a search came up with this one class playground uh, it was perfect it's exactly what I needed it has one hole at the top and when we're making our own I just give the kids all these little strips of blank paper and we end up it takes like a half hour and we fold them and they're already cut but we fold them and we label them so voila if you can print at your home if your printer has any ink in it because I know sometimes ours is out um, this is the ideal fraction strips page. There are probably thousands on the internet, but this one just seemed to fit the bill for what I was looking. So uh, one hole at the top, you wanna have halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths. If you have eighths, that's great. Tenths and twelfths, this one would be the least likely to get used sometimes we do tenths but more often everything is right up in here so if you can find one of these online I highly recommend uh, printing it if you can print now if you can't print because you don't have a printer uh, but you can see what to do use this as a model cut your own little strips of paper and fold them in the ways that they would be divided it gets challenging when you have thirds uh, and fifths, but um, I wish I could be there to help you, but I can't. So that's where um, you just have to kind of be prepared. Now, once you uh, get that, I'm going to say, hey, cut them out, but only cut them into whole pieces so that uh, you can fold pieces back because what we're going to be doing with these is you'll take your whole and we'll be looking at how much a half is of the whole, and so you can fold it back. And you can even put some color on them. They do have colored strips online, and if you have a color printer, although it would probably take up a lot of ink, and again, it's expensive. So you could compare how many fourths it takes to make up one half. So. These are uh, very helpful when looking at equivalent fractions. So if I have one half, which is one part out of two parts, then the equivalent amount, look at it's exactly the same size, would be two fourths. And so we'll be doing that as we get going through this lesson. But this is again the preview to, um, to lesson one. So basically what we're going to do is start out with a number line. So another thing you're gonna need to have handy is a ruler. And we're gonna make a number line. And what's helpful is if the number line is at least as long as your fraction strip, maybe a little bit longer. Usually the ones I cut, honestly, they're only six inches. So this is gonna be a little bit longer for me and I'm just gonna put it, I like to use the blue lines, but you have to make it darker. So I'm going from the half inch all the way out here. I'm just gonna go a little bit past seven. There you go, so make a number line. And then on this number line, we need to have our fraction strip. It is just barely long enough. Okay, and we're gonna label it. And I have these, um, I go back and forth and I call them tick marks or hash marks. 
And so it's going to be right where your number line is um, matching up with the vertical lines on your fraction strip. So uh, label these parts. If this is zero and this is one, okay, then what would this be? It would be one out of two parts. So if this is zero and this is one half and this is one whole, how many halves is this? This is zero halves and this is two halves. So if I have one half plus one half, I get two halves. So you're kind of learning about adding fractions right there. One plus one is two, but you don't add the denominators because what I'm saying is that if we have halves, we have two parts and you can't change the number of parts here. That's what it is. So that stays the same. Okay, then um, we're gonna draw another one. Oh, actually, I think in the book, they're gonna have you draw a model. So then the next thing that they have you get used to seeing is this area model. So draw a box that's about one inch by one inch. I always just kind of guess, ooh, look at that, it's exactly right, oh, I'm good. Okay, so you draw a big square that's about one inch by one inch. And so this is what's called the area model. And we're gonna be talking a lot about this in module three. Okay, so this is the number line. Number line, and this is the area model. And we're gonna model the same things, but multiple ways, okay? So you have to know that this is a number line, and this is the area model. And so if we're looking at halves, pick a point in the middle, draw a line down, and then kind of scribble shade. It doesn't have to be perfect, just enough so that you can see that this is a half. It's a half of one whole, so when we look at what is one, it's the whole amount. What is half, it's a portion of that. And then as we change and show equivalent amounts, make another little box here, draw the halfway line, shade it again so that you can See that it is one half, this amount is one half, label it. And also label the top. It's like we're doing the same thing over and over. That's okay, it's really good in the beginning to take some time and practice with this stuff. Now we're making an equivalent fraction right here. So we're going to draw a line across. And so what we've done is we've taken the one half and I have uh, made it into two groups of two. Sometimes the book does this. They go one times two over two times two. I have just, this is how I do it. That's just my way. And so when, when you are making two groups of two, what happens is you end up with two that are shaded out of four. And so this is an equivalent fraction this is the same value as the, the last part. One half has the same value as two fourths. Okay, so this is gonna be your number form or standard fraction form. Okay, and that's what this is and so we're, we're practicing making equivalents in lesson one, but also throughout module three, we're gonna be going back and forth uh, with all this stuff. Now, a couple important things that I will be saying, and you have to know because it's all over the book, is that the number on top, oops, number. Oh, yeah, wait, sorry. Numerator is what I wanted to write there, not number, and not numberator, it's numerator. And the bottom is the denom in a tour. And this is the top number, that's the fancy name, and this is the bottom number. And that's what 
you're going to be seeing a lot of. And so some questions are just going to say, uh, find the numerator, find the denominator. I like to think that denominator is a bigger word or it has more syllables so it's on the bottom so it makes a better pyramid to hold up your fraction. Um, eventually we're going to learn about improper fractions which are like upside down. It's like the big numbers on top and it looks weird but uh, so then I always think, oh, that's not proper. So let's make another number line. Try to make it a wee bit longer this time. Okay, oops, and it's crooked. Oh, well, we'll get over that. And this time, let's take our fourths. And again, try to stretch it out, lay it over the top, put your tick marks at the end. And this time, I want you to mark it not only in half, but every fourth. So when making number lines, you want to um, label and be very precise. Okay, now at the top, I want you to put zero and one because that's the whole. But underneath it, we're gonna talk about fourths. How many fourths are here? Zero, we haven't gone anywhere. And then how many fourths are here? This is where one fourth is. How many fourths are here? Two. How many are here? Three. And how many are here? Four. So then we start to see this pattern developing about what does a whole number look like? Well, it's all the pieces out of all your options. So two pieces out of two pieces make one whole. Four pieces out of four pieces make one whole. And guess what? 2 over 2 is equal to 4 over 4 because they both equal 1. Anyway, when the kids are here, it's like, oh, phew, mind blown. Um, so anyway, this is just the beginning of this lesson, and I wouldn't ever go into the book without teaching this stuff first. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I had a video for that just in case... Um, you guys don't get to do that in class, but of course my students will get to do that with me, so this will be all ready to go. Anyway, I, I hope it's helpful. When you take your fraction strips and they're all cut apart, if you wanna fold them up and put them in a little baggie uh, or an envelope, that's a great way to organize them. Uh, put your name on it, just in case it falls on the ground. Uh, then you can find it or your mom will not suck it up in the vacuum cleaner. So um, anyway, if these videos are helpful, hit subscribe. I just want to help you guys out. This math is tough. So I will hope to see you soon. And next week, I'll start working on the module three videos.